गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर उषा कुमारी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश सी एच एल गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज छारा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू द पोएम ऑड ऑन ए ग्रेशन आर्न इट्स रिटन बाय यंगेस्ट द यंगेस्ट रोमेंटिक पॉइट जॉन किड्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ऑड ऑन ए ग्रेशन आर्न Written by John Keats. Poet John Keats was born on thirty first October seventeen ninety five at Moorgate City of London. He was the youngest of romantics, as I already told you, and he died young when barely he was of the age of twenty five. On twenty third Feb eighteen twenty one, at Rome, Italy, Papal says, in twenty third on twenty third Feb eighteen twenty, he discovered that he is suffering from he was suffering from tuberculosis, and after one year, he died. He wrote five odes, uh, sorry, six odes. in 1819 which includes to psyche to nightingale ode on the grecian or on melancholy to autumn and ode on indolence and what is the interesting fact about it is that only it's the ode on grecian urn which has which ha- has had been dated others were without dates and it was published on in 15th issue of annals of fine arts uh about this poem one thing is very interesting that its two poems are most or the often quoted and most famous and they were beauty is truth truth beauty that is all you know on earth and all you need to know in this all we see that there are five stanzas and each stanza contains 10 lines and these 10 lines have shakespearean as well as petrarchan rhyme scheme that is a b a b c d e c d e or c d e c d e it a structure which is mixture of the shakespearean and petrarchan structure of ode that is octave and sestet as we already know octave is of eight lines and sestet of is of six lines this poem was composed when uh, when kids visited the british museum and there he saw uh, that was of elgin marble and he saw a grecian urn there were some pictures depicted on this urn and he was inspired by these pictures and as we read the stanza of this ode we find that he describes the scenes of that were depicted on this grecian urn so basically this poem describes the beauty of art and or we can say the permanence of art and transience of human life so let's get started with the reading of the poem though still unravished bright of quietness though foster child of silence and slow time silvan historian who canst do express a flowery tale more sweetly than a rhyme what let friends listen haunts about the shape of ditties or mortals or of what in temp are the days of arcady here the poet describes or addresses the urn that's why it's an old its address the urn poet calls this urn sexually pure bride of silence 
he also calls it the foster child of time uh, he also find that there are natural like beautiful pictures are depicted on this and he calls this natural pictures as silver historian even he goes on describing that even silver historian cannot be able to describe the beauty in such beautiful way as this urn describes uh, through the picture star on the urn he describes that it's wonderful to have such beautiful scenes in our nature but human beings don't have time to speculate whether the pictures are of god or of human beings i ask a series of questions to uh, the urn and ask what live fringed legend haunts about the shape there are some pictures on this urn and he asked the question what kind of pictures these are of deities or mortal whether they are gods or they are human beings or both he also asked whether the uh, valley depicted is of <laughs> depicted is of temp of uh, or dale of arcady this is the place mentioned in this first stand in this way we have seen the deep mystery of uh, the pictures depicted on the earth in the second stanza the poet ask what men or goods these what maidens loath what made mad pursuit what struggle to escape what pipes and timbrels what wild ecstasy here he says that um what men or goods are these the poet saw the pictures depicted on the urn and asked whether they are men or uh, gods what maidens loath and why the maidens hate these men why they are following these maidens what kind of struggle struggle is uh, there between these maidens and these men what pipes and timbrels are uh, sung by these men sitting under the tree and what kind of wild ecstasy what kind of pleasure natural pleasure is there on this urn uh, here again we see that uh, he is describing the permanence of nature that art is permanent we can see that wood is curious about the pictures seen on the urn her melodies are sweet those un unheard are sweeter therefore ye soft pipes play on not to the sensual ear but more endeared pipe to the spirit it is of not on the so a musician sitting there and playing his flute but he speculated that uh, the music sung by this um, musician is more sweeter than the music of the real life music in real life charms our ears but the music depicted on the urn is more attractive for the heart more attractive to the soul it appeals to our ears and though it has no sound still it attracts our soul and on the whole we can see that this in this stanza we have again appeal to the art the music depicted on the art is permanent and the music in the real life is not so long lasting fear youth beneath the trees thou canst not cannot live thy song nor ever can these trees be bare bold lovers never never canst thou kiss though winning near the goal yet don't grieve she cannot fade though though has not thy bliss she cannot fade though thou has yeah, not thy bliss forever with the love forever with the love and she be fair this tenja uh this tenja raises the deep thoughts in poet's mind and um, there are pictures uh, depicted uh, on this urn that was of a young man who is playing his pipe 
is a pipe for but he says that you will always go play you will always gonna be playing your music you will never tired of playing your music and it will always be sweet and nobody will dislike this music over the uh, the youth uh, sitting under a tree and this tree will never live shed its leaves and never be without leaves uh, whether it is autumn or some other season it will always be like the same it will never be leafless there was another picture in which a young man a lover is near to kiss his beloved though he is very near he will never fulfill his goal but still his beloved will never be uh, ugly she will always be fair and he will never lose her his love will always be permanent for her there will be no obstacle in their love a happy happy bow that cannot shed your leaves nor ever be spring a dew a happy melodies unwearied forever piping songs forever new the tree which is depicted on this earth will always be green and its branches will always be like uh, new alive this tree will never say farewell or goodbye to the spring season the pipper who is depicted on the sun will always keep on playing his pipe he will never tired of playing his pipe on the whole we can see that even in this stanza the poet um, stick to the idea that uh, idea that uh, um, art is permanent but human life is transient more happy love more happy happy love forever warm and still to be enjoyed forever painting and as forever young old um breathing human person far above that lifts a heart high sorrowful and cry a burning forehead and parching tongue uh, we can see that uh, poet says that more happy love more happy happy love here he says that the people become happy when they see the art art excites human beings and it gives pleasure to them and they never tired of uh, uh, their art or artful and, and their love for art always grow always youthful always remain fresh the love of art is superior than the love of real life real life there are so much worry to, uh, to there must so, there are so much things to worry about and uh, tongue becomes harsh but in uh, this kind of artistic and uh, artifact love uh, always remains sweet again he says that art is superior who are these coming to the sacrifice to what green altar or mysterious priest leaders though that he for uh lowing at the skies and all their silken flanks with garland grass a mountain bell what led down by the river of shields or a mountain well with the peaceful citadel as emptied of this fog this pious morn uh when he saw the picture he found the, there was a picture depicted on a, this on um, here a um, procession was carrying the sacrificial animal to its uh, sacrificial place here poet is curious to know about the place where they are going to worship he describes the scene where the calf is decorated with the flowers and he is leading the group or the crowded uh, crowd of the people and there was a priest uh, with this heifer or this asked the question to which town they belong to belong but he saw a village where uh, near the river or it may be a sea shore but there was not a single fog to tell him that where these people are going and what is the name of that village which place is that so it was emptied from the fog here the poet shows that our captures the moment of real life and makes it permanent and little down the street for ever more will stand and be and not a soul to tell why though our desolate can never return 
again the four present idea of uh, permanence of art and permanence of human life there is a picture of the old town on the on uh, the city is but the city is deserted all people of the town have gone somewhere but uh, there is not a single person to tell him what city is that what town is that and uh, um and the poet says that this town will always remain deserted o oh, attic shape fair attitude with the bread of marble man and maidens of a rot with forest branches and the trodden weeds here the poet again describes the and he calls it the great specimen of greek art he calls it a piece of wonder it's very beautiful and beautiful man and pictures and uh, scene of natures are depicted on this on making it it permanent you also find a picture of uh, uh, branches or trodden grass on this urn and he assumes his own about these uh, pictures those silent form does tease us out thought as the eternity cold pastoral when os when old is shall this generation waste those shall remain in midst of other woe then ours a friend to man to whom those say beauty is truth and truth beauty all you need to know know on earth all you need all you know on earth and all you need to know again we have pressed the conclusion of the poem includes with these immortal immortal lines in fact this urn takes or transports human being to the dull thoughts to the eternal world of imagination of permanence of art it tells the story of uh, beautiful natural surroundings but itself itself is cold and lifeless it has no life but it depicts the life of surrounding nature and human beings it is immortal because with the passage of time human beings die whoever takes the birth will um, die one day but this urn will remain forever with its art and beauty it will remain as the friend of human beings and will tell the story of beauty of one generation to the next gen it will describe that beauty is truth whatever is beautiful is truth and this is the ultimate reality of human life the thing of art is realistic and beautiful and immortal so in the end we also see the thing that art is permanent and human being is transient uh he also ask uh tells human beings that this is the reality of human life and all people living on this world need to know this truth that art is permanent the poet concludes with this fact that uh, in this world many things which are very beautiful uh, many human beings who are beautiful who are great but they live for the short time and then they live this world they are temporary but art travels from one generation to another and is permanent and it tells the story of human beings or the beautiful objects or beautiful things to the next generation it always remains in our hearts in the shape of beautiful objects and convey the story to the next generation he also conveys the idea that ordinary human experiences are imperfect well art is perfect art is permanent and it's perfect so thank you students that's all for today uh with this our poem all on intuition on is done if you have some queries you can ask me in the next class thank you students thank you so much have a nice day